everybody, and uh, welcome back to another exciting episode of Indie Corner Radio. I'm your host, Jonathan Mitty, and I've got an awesome, awesome guest. Um, I'm I'm going to say, that, uh, do you go by Br- uh, Brittany Saylor? Is that? I do. Okay, so. Yeah. All right. So I wanted to make sure of that uh, before I say anything, but uh, I want to also make sure I'm saying it right, because some this is, a once again, something I always get messed up on. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing something right so it's sailor you said yes okay awesome and uh so Brittany, uh like first of all give some background to some people who may not be familiar with your work or or whatnot like how did you get started in this business oh goodness um i've wanted to be an actor since i was eight so originally i got started um in college and i quit because it's so cutthroat And I wasn't mature enough for it um, with self-esteem. So then once I kind of got a little older, I started doing it all over again and I'm loving it. (laughs) Um, So I really, really got started uh, probably in about 2018. Okay. So, all right. So first of all, you said like, uh, I guess you wanted to start when you were eight. I wanted to, well, okay. So yes, absolutely. Um, And you do school plays and all of the things, but I am from rural Kentucky. So there's no acting training. There's no like group camps. There's nowhere that you can go to really train. So you just do school plays and church plays and that. You did a lot of that. Um, I did. Yeah. So did you enjoy it? I loved it. I loved it. And then, so, okay. So then you get to college age and you try it and um, it's just, you got to basically have a really thick skin at that point, right? You do. Um, and I think be, being someone who came from rural Kentucky, the tiniest things would kind of mess with my self-esteem at the time. Um, something as simple as my Kentucky accent and people constantly telling I like me. your I accent. Like, <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm fine with it now, but at 18, definitely not so much. Well, you weren't, you weren't fine with your accent? I wasn't, no. Um I was not at, because my they would make fun of me and they would be like every time I would say why they would be like oh you said it like why why it's all flat and I'm like okay she's <laughs> thanks I know uh, well, I know you know uh, then you should make fun of their accent you know like <laughs> just throw right back at them uh, people love that um, <laughs> but it's it's weird it's weird to me to know like how, how kind of cruel people are when they sometimes they don't realize they're being cruel you know yeah i don't think they were i mean we were all just 18 um i think it was more just my insecurity and hearing it on repeat just made me feel like i really wasn't in the right right space for it definitely so then you start like but those films you did do some films right uh in the college i did age. i did were you um happy i did with them? um I'm sorry. Were you happy with them? Yeah, definitely. Um, I really enjoyed it. I did a semester. I was originally a theater major. So I did a semester um, with some theater and I did um, some like student films and kind of got into that. Um, and that probably after that first semester is about when I when I switched majors. Um, and when I was living in Nashville, I kind of did a lot of local stuff still without it being anything that I had to worry too much about. I always love hearing about student films, you know, some of them are like way weird. And like, um, I think like you hear like pretentious and stuff. Did you work on any of those? Or were they like straightforward? Like what kind of student films did you work on? Um, so the first one I did was called uh, Sulky and it was phenomenal. Um, mm-hmm. Really great. It wasn't weird at all. But then I did uh, a couple more that were kind of, I don't want to say odd, but like they never fully finished it. So they pieced it all together and it was supposed to be like green screened. And then I'm supposed to get like this final copy right for my demo reel. And there's still a giant green screen in the back and nothing changed. And I'm like, I don't think I can use that. So, Not even like a clip from it? Um, for, no, <laughs> no. And I quit. Uh, I, I quit dealing with certain uh, maybe locations we'll say, or, or, um, colleges that aren't overseeing maybe the students a little better to make sure that it's a full, uh, completely edited project. So there were actually certain schools that just didn't pay attention. They just let the people go and do whatever they were doing. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think so because that was the final submission. Um, and, and nothing changed, which I thought was so odd. Um, but that's, that was a couple years ago when you first get started, that's, you know, how you get into it is through student films to build up a demo reel to showcase your range. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll do all the things. And now I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I'm very selective. You're very select. Well, that's good. Um, you know, and I mean, I was looking at your resume on IMDb and it's like, mm -hmm. you know, so you, yeah. you seem to have done a lot, um, I guess since 2018, especially. Definitely. You know. Well, the student films, I don't think are on my IMDb. So those are the professional projects that I actually got to do. So that was, um, that was pretty cool. I mean, there are a lot. So, um, uh, but like, okay, so you're an, a uh, you're an actor, you're, you're trying to get a role or whatever. Um, you know, how do you network? Oh my goodness. Um, it, everything is networking. Um, the, they host, uh, in Tennessee, they host little, um, like events where you can go and you can just meet and mingle. I think they do the same thing in Nashville and they have women's uh, uh, women's film in Nashville also. So you can meet and mingle um, and they do that in Louisville. Um, but when you go to one project, you're literally meeting so many people that people remember you and they remember your work. And then I've had um, so many people just reach out to me from, you know, I saw you in this project and I'm doing this project. Do you feel like you want to audition for so-and-so or could you portray so-and-so? And I'm like, that's awesome. Let me see what I can do. So um, a lot of it is just through work. Um, my acting coach always says work breeds work. And it it really does. It does. Uh, you're you're absolutely right. Your acting coaches are because like what what it does is like when you're on a set of a film, uh, if the people enjoy working with you, you know, um, yeah. and and sometimes people don't enjoy working with certain people. You know, I've had yeah. that. I'm sure, you've had that. Um, mm -hmm. but when they, you know, then later they're looking for, you know, somebody else to, or somebody on the set might be working on their own project or whatever. Mm -hmm. You just never know. That's why I've always said to always be nice to everybody on sets, like no yeah. matter who they are, because you really don't know who's going to be the person who comes out and helps you out next. That is so true. I mean, we should be nice to everybody anyway, but in the back of our minds, like it should always be, you know, there's always a networking opportunity just because, and I will do crew also, but I'm doing my, like I'm, I'm directing my first project now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've helped my friends on the crew capacity. So most people probably, you know, if they're on set, wouldn't even know that I'm like constantly scouting too for my projects. So yeah, definitely. Nice. definitely. Um, so you're, you're working on your own project. That's awesome. I, Yes. Um, I had this idea that was in my head for like a year and I spoke to a friend um, whom I had met through another project and I was like, okay, so I have this idea for a short film and I want to direct it and I want to create it and I want it to be mine. <laughs> and we threw it together and we just um, filmed, we started filming in April and I only have one scene left to film um, in two weeks and then it is wrapped and I'm so excited. That's awesome. So yeah. Like, okay, so how long does a lot of things take for you in post, you know? Can I just say, this is my first time editing, and I have two editors helping me. Um, and my estimate right now, I have a full first draft completed. I just need to add in the the final scene, because um, mm -hmm. we had to do a last minute rewrite. So I'll add in the final scene, and then um, I'm taking it in three stages of just video and getting all of the transitions and all of the video fixed and then audio. And then we're going to go back through and color grade. And I'm going to estimate like four months, four months. Oh. I'm giving myself four months. Well, and it's, hoping good. That that's good. it's good that you have two other editors working with yes. you and stuff yes. too. Like some, I work with one editor. So, or well, actually two, you're right. So I have an editor and then I have the guy who does my sound slash color grading and all that stuff. Like, that post up but i get my regular editor that just sends the 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 rough file to to everything so but yeah that's amazing i love that kind of stuff um and then i love that you already have like an estimate of when you want to get it completed um yeah. are you planning to do like uh festivals and stuff that's the goal um i hope to it I don't know if I'm going to do like if they do fall submissions. I'm a little new to this because all of the other ones were submitted by somebody else because it was their project. Um, but I know a lot of the ones that I've been reviewing, I'm aiming for spring. Um, 
for some of the bigger ones that I'm looking at and I'm feeling hopeful about, but I'm definitely submitting um, all U.S. stuff and then internationally by next year. Uh, and what kind of project is it? Um, so it's it's kind of drama, a little psychological. Um, there's a lot of symbolism I put into it that I, I'm hoping everybody catches, but, you know, it's subjective. So everybody interprets it, you know, how they how they interpret it. Um, but for me, it's kind of tackling a lot of mental health stuff um, with some like little twists that I thought were kind of cool. Um, there's a lot of the symbolism with um, like depression and I've, I've got some color coding going on and things like that with wardrobe. So I was very selective about certain things. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's neat. I, I like that kind of like yeah. you know you're you're pulling like a Hitchcock there you know where so. yes <laughs> like you know like you ever you watch Hitchcock movies at all like um um I've seen Psycho and Birds yeah well some of the movies because I do a show called Hook on Hitchcock where me and my co-host uh, G Larry Butler will watch a bunch of them and stuff and what we notice too is he's very specific like the camera's got to go here this person and he hates uh he hated uh what is it um uh method actors cuz they would be like you know they would come in and they would say oh my character wouldn't walk over there and you'd be like well your character has to walk over there because that's where the camera is so yeah <laughs> you know like you can't argue with him on that and yeah. uh you know things like that and i always i always love that but he would have everything color coded like if, if there's a specific scene where like maybe this black and then there's these other colors that are supposed to you know do stuff and i'm just like that's like that's what that, that blows my mind sometimes because i just i don't think like that and i feel like yeah. i need to learn that you know um yeah i actually learned that well, I, the one, uh, the the guy that's that did the writing of the script, I gave him my outline of what I wanted, and he put the script together. And he is also a director, um, and he knows all about the color coding. And so we're working on some of that in post. Um, some of it was matched with wardrobe, and some of it's masking. But he sent me this whole layout of stuff, and it was it's really impressive. That is awesome. Yeah. So okay, so that's how it all began, right? You talked to your friend that that's a writer yeah. and. You guys just kind of brainstormed some ideas and then you guys put it together, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I know. Insane. But it, it worked. <laughs> I mean, that's how you got to do it these days is do it yourself and, and make it, yeah. you know, um, and how long was the shoot? Um, In total, five days. Uh, and then we have the one add on day for the rewrite. So six, six days of filming. So this was a short, not a feature. Just a short. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that I was ready to tackle a full feature. Uh, um, well, I mean, <laughs> uh, some, I know a guy who that's the first thing he did was do a short or a feature, did a feature first, then, uh, and I even said to him, awesome. You know, usually these people start with shorts, but it's great mm -hmm. that you went right into a feature. And then right after that, he started doing an anthology of shorts. And I thought that was kind of funny, you know? But yeah. I mean, go for it. You know, um, I haven't done anything but pretty much shorts yet. I'm I'm finishing up my okay. first feature by the end of next year. But um, nice. Yeah, it's it's not it, it's taken a long ass time. I don't even want to go into that. But uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but hopefully it'll be done. Um, but to go back to your stuff, um, so you know, now as a actor working on other people's projects. And being a filmmaker on, you know, doing your own projects, do you sort of learn from other filmmakers as you're on set? Or do you sort of like, you know, sort of kind of evaporate into that? Like how, how does that work? I think so. Do you mean like in terms of um, like learning from the directors on how to direct and how things exactly. kind of flow? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't know a ton about directing, but I've done, um, you know, I've, I've gotten to work with, um, in a, my first SAG film, the, the guy had just won something from the Cannes Film Festival. So he was phenomenal. Um, so learning from him and how he approached everything and just kind of watching that on my first day on set. Um, and then working with all of the indie artists and just kind of see how creative you are when you don't have as much of a budget um, has been, it's been amazing. It's been amazing experience to observe and to be under them, you know, as they're the directing uh, director directing me. 
Um, so definitely. And then you're able to ask them questions too, especially the, the local uh, indie directors. They're very approachable. So in my work, like if I needed to ask a question on, you know, their opinion on different things, different shots or things like that, like they've been very helpful. That's awesome. Um, are you a SAG actress? No, um, I've done three SAG projects, but it's the SAG uh, micro budget. So you're still non-union. Um, you can't get your SAG card with that. You can't with three? I thought, so uh, does, it has to be three budgets. like big budget ones. Yeah, has to be bigger budgeted. I know, but it allows me the opportunity. I got to work with um, somebody that I grew up watching. Um, he played, oh, gosh, I cannot remember the name, uh, the bully on Hey Arnold. Um, oh, I, so. <laughs> I, I was never into Hey Arnold. Um, oh my goodness. A lot I of friends who that. were, um, let me look it up real quick. Cause, um, but yeah, I, I was never, for some reason, never into uh, that show. I guess I was, maybe I was like above the demographic or something when I, I got, when maybe. it came out. Um, yeah. Um, I think his name is Justin. I, I might butcher this last name. Forgive me. Uh, Shinkaro. Oh, okay. Something like that. Um, I've gotten to work with Sarah Hay also. Uh, I don't know if you saw her Stars uh, series, but she was amazing to, to watch and have a scene with. Um, so it's given me a lot of opportunities to work with some really cool people who have like a ton of experience. So what do you think you've learned the most from a lot of them? Um, I've, I've watched just how they're relaxed on set I always thought like oh my god I have to go in and I have to do all these things and you know you're thinking about all this stuff and they're just like so chill and they're so in their character and in their moments and I'm like god, that is so beautiful um and then just watching how they develop things because we did um the the zoom raids because it was right in the middle of uh 2020 the shutdowns and we still got to film don't ask I don't know how that happened but we did the zoom reads and just watching them like tweak their characters and bring them to life just through zoom reads and take the direction on the zoom reads was um just I don't know it was it was really incredible to see how they approach it and how they redo things to match and and build and it was really cool that's great yeah that's wonderful um so as a you know as, as an actor who goes in there and uh and does that like yeah, tell tell me more about the like uh, audition process for you. Like, you know, what's that like? Um. Well, usually I will start with reading the 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 sides just a couple of times. One, I want to feel for the entire point of what I'm having to do, what my character's having to do, who I'm talking to. Um. And then I am method trained, <laughs> so we do obviously like our breakdown of questions to be able to build the character, and then just putting that work in. Um, who are they making your choices, getting your nuances, um, just really doing the full development and then record who you've developed uh, and hope for the best. Yeah, that's that's funny that, you know, I mentioned that the method acting and, and whatnot. No. <laughs> Do you ever feel like that's true, though, like that, like you're on set and you you're you feel like your character is going to go this way and 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 whatnot, like. And the director's just like, no, 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 I want you to come over here and do this. Um, I haven't had a bad experience yet where I'm I'm not but I will say, let me let me say this first. Um, most of the indie uh directors that I've worked with are pretty like, okay, you build it. And if they need to rein me in, like they totally can. And I'm very open to to being redirected. I don't think that I know all the things. I think that I I build how I feel that my character is. But at the same time, if there's something like that the scene needs, we have to be mindful of adjusting for the scene. Do you do a lot of research? Um, if I need to, absolutely. I think research is a very big part of it. I will say um, I, I will continuously observe myself and other people for behaviors, for noticing like the tiny things I do. Like if I'm frustrated, um, I'll my jaw will get tense. Those are things that I probably wouldn't have paid attention to prior to training method. Um, so that when I need to portray frustration or things like that, I know that I can tense my jaw and it will give me a, a physical response that I need. Um, so that type of research is ongoing every day for me, just in my own observations. But like if I need background on the different careers or different uh, things about my character, absolutely. That's awesome. I love that. Like I, I, I know like one girl who had to, re uh, had to play, uh, I guess a detective, like a, a, 
police officer. So she mm-hmm. actually went on a like a ride, ride along and stuff with yeah. everything. And I think that's so cool. If you get the like, I think the the company paid for her to do that too, to get her Please. to do that. And it was a low budget film, so I'm like, like wow, that's that's awesome. I don't know if they had some kind of connection with the cops or something, but like to be able to let her do that so that she could feel like you know um yeah she was, she was there um now when you're in the moment um are you in the moment like are you absolutely there do you feel that way yeah yeah i do there's a whole different and i don't even know how to describe it um even just doing classwork i can feel when i'm on and when i'm not um and your whole body responds so if i'm in an intense scene i feel it from head to toe um, that's the only way that I can get into, um, I guess my character is if I'm really just immersed, it's, I, I really don't know how to explain it, but you literally feel a shift. You have no thoughts. You're just present. Yeah. Cause all right. So you're, you're doing a movie or whatever. Is there anything that like, uh, you know, you know, the whole Christian Bale thing, right. Where you got distracted by the camera guy walking back and forth and back and forth. You don't remember, didn't hear anything about that? No, on I the don't... Set, set of Terminator, um, whatever Terminator he was on, where he was playing John Connor, he ended up um, getting into a, um, what is it, a uh, altercation, I guess would be the nice way of saying it. But he freaked out on the uh, camera uh, man because the camera guy set up the camera and then would pace back and forth, you know, and that like was in his eye line, you know, and everything when he was doing the scene, he was that was distracting to him and it pissed him off. I don't know if he had told him before or something, but it was on audio where he's just like yelling at the top of his lungs. If you ever have like a moment, not like that, but like where you sort of got taken out of what you were doing because either you were distracted from something or that somebody else like the camera guy like uh you would notice the camera or something like that wouldn't be where you know what you would normally see in that as that character um i want to say like if i'm not fully in my character i can be easily distracted but once i'm fully present like my focus is there and i just i tend to keep going with where i'm at regardless of what's going on until somebody tells me to stop if I'm in my head a lot though and and we're not supposed to be right you're supposed to be in your character but when you first start your scene um like it'll take me a little minute to to adjust and kind of transition into because you know you've got the nerves and you're just kind of like okay I gotta get this you know energy moved into something and so if something's going on at the beginning I have to really really focus um but once I'm in it I'm in it yeah um so yeah once you're in it you're just completely you're there focusing on the stuff um how do you focus on it like is there is there a technique um for me i i really don't think it's anything more than being able to get um because my anxiety is always high i'm always really excited i'm so sorry um if this is messing up (laughs) something keeps beeping in um when i when i first start i'm always so excited and you're always kind of like okay i hope i don't screw anything up and I, i do have my lines memorized and i know where my blocking is and so you're all kind of in thought Um, so it's a matter of shifting out of thoughts and into the moment of the character. So once I can get past the first couple of lines, I'm good because my energy goes into it. Um, so for me, it's really just about transitioning and allowing that and using it. That's awesome. I love that. Like, that's so cool. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I have books, like I have like, um, uh, was it Meisner on acting and, you know, and, uh. I was living, I, I think I've told this story on this show before, but uh, it'll be new to you. Um, the uh, I had a roommate who was uh, took um, uh, class classes for, for acting for like um, the Meisner and the Meisner technique and stuff like that. And uh, uh, she was telling me like her teacher told her not to read the book, you know, before mm-hmm. coming to the classes because, you know, um, the problem is when you've read the book and, and whatnot, you think like, like you're know-it-all, you know, like you think yeah. you know everything before yeah. they're able to actually teach you anything and stuff. You're supposed to like basically empty out your, 
you know, water glass and stuff, you know, like, and let them pour in their own water. Um, and I love that. Like, I, but I, for a while, the Meisner books were all I had because I didn't have acting classes around here in Virginia. So, you know, I mean, we do, but they're like way too expensive for, you know, um, like in LA, I would understand, but in Virginia, I'm like, we should cut those oh. down a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I love, uh, I love that stuff. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if Meisner would be something I would be completely into, but then again, when I act, I am in the moment, you know, or whatever and stuff. Yeah. And I can feel it. It's really weird because like when, yeah. when the action is called, then I'm just like, I'm there, you know, and it's a weird state. And you said you kind of take a little bit before you jump into action or like mm -hmm. jump into like, it. Yeah. When they call action, I know my lines, I know what I'm supposed to do. So my focus is like, okay, you know, like let's breathe and let's do this. And then once I'm starting to like speak and get into it, like then, then kind of the excitement, everything wears off and it's all professional, I guess. And you get into your moment. Do you have any tricks on like uh, memorizing your lines? Um, I really don't. I apparently have a really good memory. I can memorize, memorize my lines pretty fast. Um, for me, I just read them, um, two or three times and then I'll read them out loud a couple of times. If I'm having a hard time, like if it's, if it's a lot, like a lot of pages and things like that, one trick I do, um, on your, the, the voice record, the memo type thing on your iPhone, um, mm -hmm. I'll record all of my dialogue, well, the whole scene, I'll record every ounce that I need to memorize and I'll just listen to it while I'm driving too, if I need that extra. Uh, that's actually a good idea because it's weirdly enough, like when I listen to a song over and over again, I'll eventually learn the lyrics, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but in the beginning, you know, it might take me a little bit to, to remember, you know, but the more yeah. I listen to it, the more, yeah. So that's good. Um, I've thought about that, like doing stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. when I, when I do it. So maybe next time I will. Yeah. Um, now, uh, so you go from like one project to another, um are you ever like worried working with a new filmmaker at all um I I feel like I'm selective enough and I kind of like I like to check out background for quality and things like that um I'm nervous in how I perform for new people um or how they are going to direct so some amount of it but I feel like it's like this maybe a good thing, like a good curiosity. I try to do my research. I try to make sure that I'm prepared for their style um, mm -hmm. so that I can be, you know, what I need to be as far as my character, but also easier to work with. Um, yeah. So, but I, I feel like it's a good thing. Not, um, not so much in a bad way. I always like asking this question. What, what is, uh, you know, what's, what's been the hardest role that you've ever had to do? Toughest. Oh, I don't know. Um, I want to say I had a really good one uh, that I was allowed to improv on and I, I was a little bit more nervous about it. Um, it was for a horror film uh, that we did last summer. And I had to be since it's out now, I'm allowed to say uh, like I had to I was kidnapped and I had to be like in this whole moment of how am I going to respond what would it actually be like to be kidnapped and tied up here and not like trying to portray it, but to actually feel it. So they like, I had them tie me up pretty good um, to the point that I was, I was pretty bruised up, but it was very helpful. And I felt like that was a really good challenge just to be able to improv it. Like, I don't even remember what lines came out of my mouth. And when I watched it, I was like, Oh, <laughs> that's a little <laughs> intense. Um, so I feel really good about it now, but I think that one was a really good challenge for me last year. So, wow. So you're tied up and you're, you're kidnapped. Um, did you feel like the emotion of actually being in that, in that situation? I did. I did. Um, and I think when I can actually use the things around me, like being tied up, like if it's fake, um, then I know it's fake and I'm like, okay, I can get out of this. So how do I make myself not be able to get out of this? Cause I don't want to look like I'm trying to struggle. I want to struggle. So, um, I had it extra like looped in the middle so that my hands couldn't just come loose and I wasn't mm -hmm. just like faking this whole thing. So um, that was really cool. That is cool. I, I like that. It's it's yeah. such a, you know, 
when when somebody is completely invested and in everything, you can definitely tell. You know, yeah. And when somebody is faking it, you know, you can also tell. You know, yeah. hello, doggy. Yeah, and I don't ever want to fake it. <laughs> um. Yeah, definitely. I nobody wants to fake it, but you know it. Sadly, uh, and and I hate saying this, but the majority, a lot of indie actors, they don't take classes. They don't work on their craft, and uh, and then they get mad. Like sort of when they don't get cast for roles over somebody yeah. who is hopefully. Um, yeah. Now, there's also this other thing that's happening. I know it's happening in Hollywood. I don't know how much of it's actually happening in uh, the indie scene or whatnot. Um, but there's people who are getting cast because they have more followers than other people, and and yeah. you're a trained actor, so you must get like really upset if you get like voted over somebody who has just more followers and that's pretty much why they yes. they got it you know yes um, that is that is huge in the indie scene unfortunately um and even like especially if there's a budget then you want somebody with a ton of followers so that you can push it uh and get more exposure and you know keep building the budgets but then you should think of quality in my opinion over numbers because we can market you know, we're going to put forth the effort and invest more in um, time and, and energy and character building. And I mean, if they're super good, that's one thing. But, you know, if it's just over numbers. It's, oh, yeah, like a TikTok good. TikToker who has never acted before, but has like five million followers on TikTok. Yeah. And might get cast yeah. in this indie film where, you know, they have to do a really intense scene and they don't know how to do that because they've never... Yeah play you know they've only done the tiktok videos where they talk to the camera or whatever you know like it's yeah. a completely different thing and i don't understand why people like i can understand those um like there's this guy on youtube that i absolutely love but he's a good actor and he is uh he does like these pitch meetings i don't know if you ever seen them but like he'll uh basically pretend to have a pitch and he's pitching to himself like mm -hmm. it's him talking to himself you know, or whatever, like, uh, and uh, having a really good conversation, whatever. It's funny, and it's well written, and well directed, and well acted. You know, that kind of person I can understand with his following. He's got a pretty good following. Getting getting a part, and you know, when an angry video game nerd has to act when he does his things, things like that. But like, there are TikTokers who just dance, and then <laughs> I don't understand, or you know, or or lip sync. You know, they're not even singing. And why are they getting, you know, these these things? I don't understand it. Yeah, no. I, I don't know. Um, I guess the with the, the twisted idea of we all have to make it. So we all have to attach ourselves to people who are making it through anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It is it's exceptionally frustrating um, because it's it's nonstop. I mean, all of us are trying to keep working and keep building our resumes and keep doing all the things. Um, but I, I did lose uh, something because somebody said I didn't have enough followers. I barely use Instagram though. Like, how am I supposed to build followers if I'm rarely ever on there? <laughs> well, see, that's the problem. And they want you to be on there. And it, Instagram is like one of like is almost like my kryptonite. That and Snapchat, I just don't don't get them. Yeah, you know. And um, I, I I just got rid of Twitter. Um, and Twitter wasn't doing it. You know, like I might have had a few friends on there, but like, you know, I can find them somewhere else. I'm sure, you know, like yeah. I just I don't get uh, I never liked uh, I never I, social media is such a pain in the butt nowadays, you know, Definitely. and uh, in the beginning, like, I don't know uh, if I, I don't know. You, you probably didn't have your own MySpace back in the day, did you? Oh, my God, I, I totally did. You did? <laughs> I did. Like, so you have what top? What was it? Top five or something? Top. Uh, Your top five? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, all that stuff. But see, that was the beginning of it all, and I loved it. And then Facebook came around. And I was like, okay, this will be good. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like something's got lost in in the whole thing. And I think a lot of it too is like I use it for my mainly for my marketing and my uh podcast stuff you know just getting it out yeah. there more but like 
if I didn't have that, I'd probably leave it because it's just, you know, everybody I know, I've got their phone number that I, I need to keep in contact with or something, or they can get my number, you know? Um, yeah. But it's just, it's just a pain in the butt these days. Um, I, what is your, what is your like least favorite? Is Instagram your least favorite one? It's not that it's my least favorite. I, I'm never on there. Um, I don't, I've used Facebook probably the most, um, or Snapchat, but I, I talked to two people on Snapchat <laughs> and oh, it's okay. just my friends. And we send each other like photos of our animals or crazy things we're doing throughout the day. So it's not even that I use it other than that. We just don't text. We just like send photos. I don't know. I don't see somebody was saying, and this was a good idea. Like uh, I, I follow this guy on YouTube named Gary V. He's an entrepreneur. And I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but he on YouTube, he talks a lot about social media and how to use it properly or whatever. That's like one of his big things. And he doesn't do it for money. Like he's not none of it. He doesn't. I mean, he gets paid for his regular job, but like this is just to him. He just wants to get the information out there and help people, you know, and whatnot. And one of the things he talks about is the. um one one thing you mentioned was uh using like reels you know um from your mm -hmm. uh facebook reels or whatever but doing like vlogs on your on your reels you know yeah and yeah. i think that's a really good idea like we just talk to people tell people what's going on and i see a lot yeah. of people doing it you know which is great but then i don't see a lot a lot of other people doing it and it makes me go man this is a way to like I need to do it. I just haven't, you know, just yeah. too much, too much other crap going on in my life. Like I, can't do I know. I, I need to be doing this too. <laughs> just, right. Yeah. So, I mean, do you, do you ever feel that way? Like, cause you mentioned you're, you have like anxiety when you're on the sets and stuff. Do you have like anxiety a lot? Um, well, I feel like everybody has some amount of anxiety. I don't think mine is super abnormal unless, you know, the week in general has been crazy and then mine can escalate. Um, but I mean, in general, yeah, I mean, I do have some, I feel like some of it though is good. Like I'm, I'm pretty easily excited. So I get really, really pumped to be on set. Um, and then there's also that performance anxiety of making sure that, okay, did I memorize everything, even though I know that I did and then kind of questioning and then just kind of letting that go and you got to learn to use it. Um, so I think that's where I'm at is that I, I know how to use it a little better. Now, had you asked me this question like two years ago, absolutely. I would have been like, oh my gosh, my anxiety stays up here. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I'm also a therapist, so I, I feel like um, I feel like I know how to implement what I need to. For the you're a therapist part. as well. Yes. So is that that's your like survivor job for now until the acting exactly. career. That's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Like I've I've known a couple therapists. So um, uh, there's one I talked to that's in the the film industry, and whenever I talk to him on the phone, it's like he's giving me therapy, you know, but it's <laughs> right. like free therapy. I'm like, I feel like I should yeah. charge, you know, he should charge me for this stuff. He, he gives me the wisdom because, but somebody told me the other day, I didn't know this. And he, he's the, the guy said that they in therapy. You're not supposed to give the people the answer, right? You're no, supposed to help never. them get to the answer. I always thought that they were there to like, tell them what to do. You know, like, Oh man that's you know, a lawsuit <laughs> yeah because yeah. if you if i if i came in and said hey you gave me some bad advice you know you're like yeah oh yeah you know shouldn't have taken it i don't know you know um <laughs> yeah. but yeah. and that's funny though because yeah i've never thought about that i was yeah i always thought it was supposed to be you know they give you they tell you how to to do it but really it is to me it's like asking questions to yourself you could probably do that to yourself like really you know, can uh but then again the therapists generally know a little bit more about certain things that can you know that can help you get more well, we questions. detect like yeah like the distortions if the distortions are going on or your perspective is really faulty you know we got to tweak that so that you can have a better perspective um and healthier thought patterns but I mean, essentially the goal is to get you out of therapy so that you can do all these things on your own because you've learned and that kind of frees you up. So how long have you been a therapist? Uh, that is a wonderful question. I graduated in 2012, I oh. think. So yeah. You've been doing so, it for a while. 
for for a bit yeah how was it like with you know the pandemic It's been insane, uh, to be honest. I think um, everybody came to therapy by 2021. Uh, and we, in my last training, they said we are not anticipated to have a drop in caseload until like 2024 because of the increase of depression, the increase of anxiety, substance abuse, like all the things have, have obviously messed with everybody, um, including therapists like we're having to do check-ins with air therapists just to make sure with the overload that we're staying balanced and we're taking care of ourselves then it's yeah that's another thing I learned like my my roommate one of my roommates my other roommate in uh California would go I'm going to my therapist and then my therapist is going to his therapist and <laughs> yeah. uh you know and I was like and you know he, she was like I'm probably giving him things to go complain about to his therapist And I was like, that's wonderful. I love it. You know, but um, it's funny. It's a funny thing. Um, you know, I, I, because like, because you're right, you know, the, the, because of uh, the pandemic, I got to say that because, you know, the C word uh, gets a lot of flags and issues, but uh, the, uh, the pandemic happened and everybody had to isolate, meaning they had to be with themselves, which, sometimes if you're not used to being with yourself all the time bad things can start to happen and you're right like mm -hmm. substance abuses or um other issues you know um things that are actually just that were bubbling before that really just became worse and it's just kind of a, a sad situation i was lucky Because A, I was in recovery from substance abuses already. So it was like, I was, I was just like, well, just going to hang out here and just watch TV, yes. you know, and stuff. But like that, a lot of people probably relapsed over that stuff. And Yeah. And yeah. Then, Everything uh, really escalated. I don't remember all the percentages, but it was really, um, I guess, kind of eye-opening to see just how much everything escalated. Like you could feel it. I mean, I know that my caseload doubled um, pretty quickly. Everything was just kind of like, I like work nonstop from until I think I would end. I would not get home until like eight o'clock at night because I was just seeing people back to back to back, um, which is not, I've, I've cut down this year, fortunately. Um, but just, you could feel it, but to see, I guess the magnitude statistically, it, it was, it was a lot. So do any of your uh, clients know that you're a filmmaker as well? Listen, no, <laughs> I don't. Um, everything is very separate. My my job, therapy, that's my focus. And uh, acting, I, I, I would say no, with the exception of one. I don't tell anybody anything. They don't know a ton about my personal life unless it pertains to something that, you know, I need them to connect to, to understand that people in general feel certain ways and that it's normal and this is how we cope with it, right? But um, my, I have a commercial that is airing across Kentucky and Tennessee both. And I had one person send me the commercial and I was like, oh, oh, so now we know. <laughs> so, so now they know you're uh, an actor as well, but like, now they know. Yeah. But I mean, that shouldn't change anything, right? Like, you know, it hasn't, it hasn't. I, I, as a, as a therapist, I don't want anybody feeling any certain way or checking out anything or having any, you know what I mean? Like I want it, I want them to feel safe. Everything should be focused on them and those my life doesn't exist when we're in that room together. It's about them and how I can help them. So I need that to stay the same. So I really don't, um, I don't try to have everybody know everything, but I, um, I get that. Yeah. You know, um, especially if they see like you're in a horror movie, they might be like, ah, you know, right. Like, or, you know, if, if some people are religious and you're in a horror film, then, you know, are they going, if they come in with a bias or worried that you're biased because they're religious or, you know, anything like that, I don't want anybody to have, feel like I have any judgments more yeah. than they do. Now. So did you have to kind of sort of, when you were in school for that, did you have to sort of learn how to cut off that biasness or was that something you already pretty much knew going in that, um, that was going to. You learn how to be aware of it because everybody has it. Um, and when you start recognizing, because it still happens, we still have these like, what do you mean you did this for the 27th time? You kind of, you catch it. You learn how to catch it and redirect it to, okay, this is where they are. Let me reframe and let's get to the curiosity of this point. 
Um, yeah. But everybody has some sort of opinion about everything. You just have to learn how to catch yours and shut it back off. So you do, uh, you do you ever catch yourself like when you're talking and then you just go, okay, let me, let me rewind and not do that. Right. Do you do that? Yeah. But I feel okay. like I do that all the time anyway. Like today I had to catch myself cause I was writing my dates as November because that's how my day is going. <laughs> so like it is May. <laughs> That's how my day started. So I'm always like my mouth. <laughs> my I'm, brain. I, I'm actually just with you. I'm with you. I actually caught myself that the other day, like forgetting what, what month it was um, because yeah. I'm working on multiple things and, and doing all these things that are in the future, you know, and stuff like, you know, planning. Cause you know, as a filmmaker, you have to plan for like, you know, you have to make sure people are, are free for certain dates or mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, for my my show for Indie Film Cafe, we have um, we do a review show and we're almost done in July. Like, you know, we're going to be wrap up the full season. So there's going to be an episode that won't air to like maybe November or December, you know, or whatever. But like you have to plan for all of that and, and whatnot. And so it's just very like i forget what what month it is what day it is you know, all yes. that stuff and i'm sure yes. you're the same way with doing multiple things and having multiple dates in your head you know all the time yeah definitely <laughs> so november wouldn't be a bad time i don't i want to see what see what happens uh in november maybe maybe that's something like interesting happens then Maybe. Um, or or maybe I just get time off with lots of turkey. <laughs> maybe that's where my brain went. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. You got you got Thanksgiving then uh, and then. So there you go. And Black Friday and all that fun stuff that comes like all right my after. favorite things. Oh, you really? You like Black Friday? Every year. I have a list that I start and I start scouting at the beginning of November for all the Black Friday lists. And then I obsess over it for weeks until it's time to buy things. I'm where do you so shop, where do you shop for Black Friday? Literally stupid stuff. I stock up on my hair conditioner for the whole year because it's like 40% off and I don't, I don't want to pay full price. So I just buy in bulk, um, in like bulk stupid out. things like that. And then I'm hoping to get maybe like, I like video games. So I'm hoping to get some like discounted video games. I just, whatever floats my boat and Christmas gifts for everybody. So that's helpful. It's funny. I'm like, I, I always forget, like, I know a lot of people like that. Well, in my family that will, like throughout the whole year by be buying Christmas gifts. Yeah. I'm a last minute. Oh crap. I forgot to do that the whole freaking year. And so I'll go and, and then, then I'll do it like after I've already bought all of this stuff for me. I'm very, I, I'm not narcissistic, but I'm like, I'm, I'm very childish, you know? So like, I think in like, um, you know, uh, terms of uh, like myself buying my, my gifts because I'm like, well, I can't tell my parents or my my siblings or anyone who's getting me a gift what to get me because I don't know what if I'll, if I'll already have it, you know, by then. So yeah, I, I yep. buy the stuff my own, and then they buy me little stuff or whatever, you know, for Christmas. Yeah, but yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Um, and so I, yeah, for me it's movies. For you, it's video games. So that's mm -hmm. that's pretty. Cool. Well, it used to be movies, and I'm running out of like shelf space. And everything has gone digital, so I'm I'm trying to watch as much uh, on streaming. But if if it's like a movie that hits my heart, like I always buy it anyway. So yeah, what's your favorite movie? Oh my gosh, there are too many. Um, I could literally go through like hundreds on my shelf. I love um, Gone with the Wind. That's my favorite long, long movie. Okay, love so it. what is it about that movie? Because I just watched that like couple years ago for the first time during the pandemic when we had lots and lots of time it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna watch this movie and i i enjoyed it but i'm like i i i don't really get the appeal necessarily myself i think for me because i even i even bought the follow-up um scarlet it wasn't written by the same person obviously but they did a follow-up like years later um i love the character I love how kind of melodramatic she is to begin with i love vivian lee anyway um, and just the transition of how all of the hardship kind of grows her up a little bit, the tragedy, I love tragedy. Um, I don't know, for me, it's, it's, it's got all those little elements with that specific character and I just really like it. So do you like, 
you like tragedy because it's dramatic or is there is there something I, else? I don't know what it is. I love, um, tra- maybe this is where my therapy brain comes in. I love tragedy and my heart gets drawn to it because I keep thinking, oh my God, if something could have been different and your, your whole brain just is like, oh, and your heart aches. And I like the feel of that when I'm watching a movie, I want to feel something. I love comedy too. Like I don't right. just like drown in all tragedy, but, um, just the, the feel of it. I love to feel connected and I'm a very character-based person, so the movie could suck, but if there's a character in there that I can connect to, like, that's it for me. I love that character. That's awesome. I love that, because, like, I, I, me personally, I am, I don't know, I don't know if I'm drawn to tragedy. I'm more drawn to, like, comedy, um, you know, myself personally, because I, I think it, I don't know if it goes to my childhood or nothing, but, like, I've always wanted, I've always liked to laugh and have a good time and everything, watching stuff, which is so funny that I got into horror films. Because like that is <laughs> the exact opposite, and so I'm actually writing a family comedy kind of project right now that's like bigger, bigger in scope and bigger in scale. But like writing it has been so in a way therapeutic, I guess, because mm-hmm. it's getting away. Like it's like, oh man, I don't have to think about who's gonna die in this next scene or who do I have to kill you know like it's nothing like that you know it's it's like oh man all I have to do is make this a b and c happen you know or whatever and it's nice you know and and trying to think of something funny is better to me than something scary or whatever um but then again drama is something I'm also in you know into because I want to feel something, I guess, you know? Yeah. You know, so yeah, I, get I think it. it's perfect. Um, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was gonna say I think it's perfect, like like when you're when you're depressed or if you're just wanting to have fun, a comedy is perfect. But also if you're depressed and you need to feel something so that you can get the crying out and you can connect to something and then do your comedy, you know what I mean? Like it it's just an outlet for emotions that we can connect to. Well, so Okay, so my dad hates like dramas, like you know, ones that make you cry, make you whatever. Because I I don't know if he likes to not go there or something. Um, but I always think, yeah, like you, I feel like, you know, we sort of we might need that sometimes, especially if we are sort of a a dramatic person in in our you know core, you know, um, and whatnot. And so I've always been into like sort of sad movies, um. I don't like movies where the dogs are die, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. You, you are a dog lover, obviously, so you're probably yes. there with me. Yeah, definitely. I can't do it. And I heard that the newest, I haven't seen it, but I heard that the newest Guardians of the Galaxy had a little bit of animal cruelty kind of thing. CGI animal cruelty, but still, like you know. <laughs> and so I'm a little worried watching it, but uh, I think uh, I've heard it's really good. You know, yeah. so yeah. um, you know that kind of stuff. But that that like turns me off when I hear that because I'm like, oh man, I don't like. I really don't want to see that. Like, yeah, I I don't like it when I like accidentally run over a squirrel, you know, or something or or whatnot, you know. So that like affects me. Um, and uh, one of the last things I'll share though is I heard and um, I an acting thing that I heard was that if and I heard this from Quentin Tarantino on an interview he did. But basically, you know, um, you know, you have to get to a place in your head where you're at at that moment, right? And mm-hmm. then bring that yeah. to your character, you know? Yeah. So say you're happy, everything's good, but then you hit a dog on your way to, you know, the play or the set or whatever. Well, even though the, the movie or the movie or the play isn't about a dog dying or whatever, you still have to bring that emotion that you just felt to that. And do you believe that's true? Do you do that by some chance or another? I don't know. I believe, um, like I believe in using what we have or what we can to bring to the character, but I don't know. I don't know that I should be bringing my sadness per se into a really happy scene, unless it can provide some sort of cool layer that I know I can connect Okay. to make it what it needs to be for my character. Um, sometimes I think that I have to shut me off on certain things if I need to, to be able to bring something else. So I, I don't know. No. 
it's interesting. He was talking about also with the with writing. He has to do that with writing and everything. And I was like, yeah. I know, like as a writer, I, I I don't think I've ever done that, and uh, unless I did that unintentionally, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like if you know how to use it in a way that is that is good and needed for the scene, sure. Um, I just don't know if I hit a dog, I'm gonna need a few minutes <laughs> before I can even be in a scene. Right. Um, you're gonna you're gonna need to take some time to like process like all of that, you know. Yeah, um, for sure. Uh so what is it what is a part that you would love to play? Like what is the what is what is your dream role? Okay. Um right now I'm obsessed with The Last of Us, so anything in there would be amazing. Um but I, I really I would love something that's juicy that would allow me and I don't even know necessarily what the role would be per se, but something that would allow me to tap into things that I haven't yet had the challenge to do yet. Um, that would be a really well layered character who has a lot of flaws, um, a lot of things that she wants to try to do and and how to kind of bridge that. Mm-hmm. I would love to sink my teeth into something super challenging. That, w- that would be awesome. I'd love to see that yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are working on um, a couple of things to make our own features. So I, we're kind of in the process of developing and I'm hoping to maybe do some of this with a with a future character in one of these projects. Um, so I have some ideas. So maybe I'll get to create my own perfect character. <laughs> right. Well, that's the awesome thing about doing everything indie is like yeah. you have control, you know. Uh, when you write it, you don't have like a studio telling you, no, you can't do that or um you know there's the there's like the marvel thing where marvel you know a lot of the directors and uh writers get into fights with the with the producers because they have specific things they need to put in this that'll connect to the next movie so they're just like you can't you you don't have free range to do whatever you want you have to do what we want you know and stuff but an indie film you know, unless you are the producer of your own world, you know, then you don't really have to, you know, answer to yeah. anybody else. And it's nice. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that. Um, so let's uh real quick, so um what have you been up to lately? Um, well, I just finished the uh short film Invisible, uh that I I would directed. Um and I have two films coming out this year that I'm really excited about. Uh, and then I have two more projects lined up for summer. What so, are the two ones that are coming out this year? Um, Live, Laugh, Die is supposed to be out in a couple of months. Nice. And that one is a serial killer comedy. <laughs> I actually interviewed uh, Ariana. So. Did you? Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. It's, it's so weird. Like she's she's from virginia where i live and stuff and she just she knows so much you know like at such a young age it just baffles my mind like she's phenomenal i'm like when i was 15 i was lucky i i i I didn't drool you know or something you know like like, i didn't i didn't know half the crap that kids know today um Mm -hmm. and and they get taught these things uh, I don't think in school they have to go to classes and they do those things, but like, still wonderful. Like, I'm, I just love that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's awesome that you're gonna you're gonna be in that. And uh, mm-hmm. and what was the other project? The Rose Wagon. Um, I, was she in that one as well, or she? Yep. In that? Yeah, yes. I like, yeah. I was like, wait, I, <laughs> I remember hearing that that one. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, did you did you work with her? before then or those two were the ones you um well actually i didn't have any scenes with her in live left die uh but i i worked with or i met her um no she had left the day that i arrived for my scenes with rose wagon um, oh wow yeah so i don't even think i've gotten to meet her in person yet but i know who she is because we we're on um social media together and in the same like groups with their films so it's so funny how like social media you almost feel like you already do have met the person, but you might not. Have I know. I know. Physically met them. You know, you talk to them all the time or, you know, have conversations online through comments. And so it's yeah. wonderful. 
but yeah, that's that's great. So you got those two projects, uh, and they're both features, right? Yes, both of those are features. Awesome. And then you've got two other ones coming out next year. You know, so. Um, yeah, so I'm assuming next year. We're filming them this year, so however long editing takes with those. One's a feature, one's a short. Do you still like working on short films? I do. I like, um, because it's a new experience, and short films, you know, you can wrap them in a weekend or in a week compared to a feature, you know, a couple weeks, so... It's just a nice experience to be able to go do something and be a different character. And then it's also shorter. Um, so you get to move on to the next one. So it just gives me more opportunities to do more things. That's that's great. Cause uh, have you, have you worked outside of Kentucky? Oh yeah. I've worked um, in Maine, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee. I just had an audition for something in Atlanta. So. Oh Yeah. yeah. Everybody keeps telling me to go Atlanta, and I'm like, nah, I yeah. think I'm, I'm going back. I'm going back to LA. Uh, I yeah, don't know. Sure. I just feel better there. I don't know. Like, Atlanta to me just feels like just one big city. Like, it's just a, it's just a, you know, and I, I, I know there's a lot of work out there, you know, and if mm -hmm. uh, by some chance I, I need to move out there, I will, but most likely. I, don't know. I think one day they're just going to move back to LA because everybody that was, you know, in LA moved to, you know, Atlanta and eventually I think they'll move back to LA. So that's yeah. my theory. Yeah. Um, it's possible. I met a bunch of people from LA um, that had moved to Nashville. I filmed in Nashville in February and um, they miss LA so bad. <laughs> so it's very possible. Um. So are you ever like going to make a big move somewhere or do you think, or do you, do you like I don't living know. in Kentucky? Um, I don't know that I want to live in LA. I feel like it would be amazing to be there. Like if I'm working on a project or to visit or things like that. I don't know that I want to live there yet. Yet. I yeah. did when I was little. That was my dream. Um, but I think that's kind of shifted. I'm more of a give me like tons of land and my own sense of privacy in a house and I'll just travel to where you need me to be. That's I mean, that's a great way to look at this. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. I I personally, when I was living in LA, I, I just, there was something about it. Like when I first visited that, like I, I came out to go to my Uber, right. On the, at the airport and I come out and like, I walk out of the airport and there's this air in LA that just like, I, I just felt so different and I did yeah. not know how to like describe that, but it was just like, all of a sudden I felt like this was my new home for real. And oh, I almost cool. didn't want to leave when I visited, but I had to go back and grab my stuff and say goodbye and do all that fun yeah. stuff. But like, it was such a, I mean, such a great place. And, uh, and just being at places where I could see, you know, uh, all the studios and uh, you're driving by the Warner brothers a lot, a lot, you know? Uh, yeah, that was so cool. yeah. Such a cool like experience, but, um, so I miss it, but then again, I'm like right now. I you know right now it wasn't the time when I went because it was 2020, perfect timing. But um, you know, it, eventually maybe I'll I'll go back. We'll see. You know, yeah. Um, living day by day. Um, yeah. Now, uh, so yeah. So how can people reach you if they want to uh, contact you about a role? Oh, um, I'm on Facebook as Brittany Nicole. Um, and then Instagram, it does notify me if anybody messages me on there. Um, I, I think it's like B Nick 87 is my name. So how much I use it. Um, Facebook is usually the best way. <laughs> um, and then we can communicate however we need to from there. Yeah. So do you, do you get a lot of auditions through Facebook? Um, indie stuff? Yes. And then, yeah. okay. So obviously if you wanted bigger stuff, you'd have to go through your your agent or so yeah my agent gets me the the bigger stuff which um some of it i just find on my own through actors access but um yeah i i'm i'm easy to access on social media i think i even made my page public so people you know if they wanted to ask me questions or like ask me to audition for something like i'm i'm pretty easy to to find and so you use actors access as opposed to like backstage yes and did you not like backstage or do you like which would do you um, prefer I like actors access. I don't know. I feel like having all of them might be redundant. I don't know a ton about backstage. Um, I know for my area, my agent said to use um, casting networks and actors access. And that was the two that they were on that they wanted me on. So. Oh, okay. Well, 
do what your agents tell you. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> let's... yeah. I don't know. I mean, if they want me on backstage, I'll go get on backstage, but I don't. Yeah. If you haven't heard that yet, then obviously it's not that as big of a deal um, or anything, but that's, I love that. Cause like, I love uh, these, um, you know, all the different ways that somebody can go out there and, and get these yeah. jobs and, and audition yeah. and everything. And uh, so everybody contact Brittany, get, you know, for roles, you know, I'm sure you'd be happy to audition for almost Absolutely. anyone. Do Zoom. Zoom's a great way to audition. Yes. I'm sure. You know, it really is. So um, contact her and uh, get her role because, uh, you know, she's going to be a big thing soon if you, uh, you know, you don't want to miss out. You know? <laughs> All right. So, Everybody, uh, thank you guys so much for joining me, and thank you, Brittany. It was wonderful. Thank you. And uh, check us out next week. Until then, bye, everybody.